Jay here from Stratford Paddock. This is the one-on-one -on -one interview and joining me again is our football financial expert, Kieran Maguire from The Price of Football. Of course, we've spoken to him many times about the Glazers, about economics. When it comes to the finances at Manchester United, he is the expert. It's always great to have him on the channel. Kieran, thanks for coming on again. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, always, always good to talk to the panel. Yes. Um, you've done that thing again, Kieran, where you've sent us all into a bit of a frenzy, as you may have noticed on your social media, with a tweet that you put out on, um, was it Monday, no, Monday night, was it? Yep, Monday night, um, where you sort of explained that United shares have fallen to a record low, um, took another tumble, uh, price now down, I think, 47% since last October. Rather than me reading out your tweet, just explain a little bit about what, what you tweeted and what it means. Well, I, I get notifications from uh, from finance houses um, and normally when something big happens. So so this is a record low for Manchester United. Now, you know, we know that the stock market is tumbling and, and, and that has been a contributory factor to that. But uh, I think what concerned me is that uh, when, when the Glazers first took Manchester United onto the stock market in 2012, you know, 10 years ago, uh, I think the expectations was that if you bought into United, potentially that could be a good investment. And at times over the course of the last decade, that has been the case. But what we've seen uh, effectively since a day after or two days after they signed Cristiano Ronaldo has been a, a pretty rapid decline in the share price as, as the, the stock markets have become increasingly taken the view that fixing Manchester United is going to be an expensive task and uh, that's going to cost money and that's going to cost the shareholders. Well, effectively, it's going to cost it's going to cost the club money, which is, is less profits for the shareholders and so on. So, so that's what we've seen. So people were saying, well, hold on, there's, there's been an economic, uh, you yeah, know, there's, there's, there's been an economic disaster globally following the invasion of Ukraine. They're absolutely right. But even so, you would expect over 10 years that, that most shares will have increased in value. That certainly is the case. If we take a look at the, the American stock exchanges as a whole, Manchester United stands out as one that has not followed that trend. I mean, we've spoken about this in the past and you've spoken about it. Why do you think we're seeing this? Why does this keep happening at Manchester United, a club that was so so successful financially and was good at making money, even with the, the Glazer takeover? Why have we seen this now where, you know, it's, it's going so wrong? Well, it, it, what the markets look at is, is they assess two things. First of all, it's their perception of the quality of management and the quality of decision making. Uh, because if you take a look at what's happened at, at you know, places like Apple and Tesla and so on, why have they gone? Why have the prices shot up? It's because they've got good product. People continue to want to buy them. And the expectation is that in the future, they will continue to do that. Um, I think as in the case of Manchester United, especially since the uh, uh, especially since the retirement of Sir Alex, the club the club's quality of decision making hasn't been great in terms of the product on the pitch. Now, we all know that Ed Woodward has previously said Manchester United doesn't need to win football matches in order to be successful from a financial point of view. And I think initially people believed that. But what we have seen is, is that uh, United are, are struggling now to increase their commercial and, part and, and sponsorship income, because if, if you are a sponsor, what do you want? You want your product let next to success. And the Glazers haven't delivered success for a, for a good few years now. Um, and, and therefore, people start to look elsewhere. Um, and, you know, we, we've just seen the Chelsea deal go through, valuing Chelsea at £2.5 uh, billion. Pounds. Now, I'm, I'm not pro or anti-Chelsea, but Chelsea are not as big as Manchester United in the eyes of most football fans. You know, they are, let's face it, before 2005, they hadn't won anything for... 50 years apart from you know that they were a cup club and, and that's and that's what they were seen as so you know if, if Chelsea are going for 2.5 billion why is Manchester United on, on the stock exchange worth less now normally when there's a takeover you you have to pay a premium and, and I accept that and yes there's a London factor but but even so you know you've got you've got Chelsea with 
uh, Stamford Bridge with capacity of 71,000, sorry, 41,000. You've got Old Trafford at 74. Chelsea don't generate the, the same type as money, and yet it's being valued quite highly. Why isn't the same thing applying to Manchester United? It's because the markets are saying in order to fix Manchester United, it's going to cost a lot of money. United already owe a lot of money you know, because the Glazers have, have got this strategy of not paying down the debt, just paying the interest on the debt. So if, if they have to borrow more, interest rates are going up. That means less money to, to spend on other things. If they want to, to reverse what's been, a, I think it's fair to say, a fairly modest season on the pitch. I mean, I'm not a United fan. I'm, I'm not here to, to uh, I, I don't know enough about football. But, it, but it's, it's, I think it's, been, it's not matched the expectations of the Manchester United fan base. I think it's fair to say that it's becoming more expensive. And not qualifying for the Champions League is worth it's, it's going to cost somewhere between 50 to 100 million pounds uh, in terms of lost revenues yeah, that that that's going to be a hit okay it's just for one season that that's not great but all of these things are adding up together and you know we know we know that six into four doesn't go for champions league places we've now got newcastle seven into four is more difficult and it becomes more expensive to get into that top four to get those champions league monies so fixing Manchester United is looking more expensive. And I think that's also reflected in, in the market's perception of, uh, of, of the club. And you know, I, I know you, you're going to hate me saying this, Jay. City and Liverpool have got it right. You, you look at the way that they recruit. You look at the way that they develop players. And you know, even as you, I, know you, I know you can't admit it on air, but you go, well, actually, they got it right. And we've... We you know, respect them from a professional point of view, hate them as a football club. You know, that, that, that's got to be your position. It, it pains me to say it, Kieran, but you, you're absolutely right. Even I can't deny that, yes, they've spent money, but they've spent it in the right way as well. And, and you've seen the success they've had with the signings they've had. You know, there's no, even for an Ardent United fan like me, there's no denying it. Um, in the short term, this sort of, you know, wiping 1.3 billion off the club, do you think that affects this summer at all in terms of how much money is available for Eric Ten Hag? No, no, it, it doesn't. I mean, I, th I think that's the one comfort that can be taken. The budget will have been set and it will have been determined partially by United's finishing place in, in the Premier League last season, which is, you know, and the, and the important thing was that, uh, okay, six wasn't good, but six is still better than seventh. So, so we, yeah, we take that into consideration as well. It's my bacon butty arriving. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's not something to worry about. In, in terms of cash flows, the cash comes from ticket sales. It comes from the sponsorship arrangements. It comes from the Premier League. It comes from UEFA in terms of TV money. All of that money is ring-fenced. So th there is no issue in terms of, of the budget. Longer term, and this is the question I think a lot of United fans will be, will be wondering, certainly the ones I've seen online anyway, is does this lead to the Glazers selling anytime soon? Not necessarily. There's two viewpoints. Yeah, we know that the Glazers are not themselves united. You know, there are, uh, you know, I think Joel is very keen in, in terms of, you know, Joel likes to be hands-on with regards to United. Some of the other, uh, some of the other uh, siblings are, they, it, it's just a pure investment um, and I suspect, you know, within the Glazer ranks, some of them probably think it's, it's just not worth the, the extra attention that it brings. It, it doesn't, doesn't bring them any, any positive attention, let's be honest. Um, so if, if somebody came in, you know, United share prices is, is, is $11. If somebody came in with, with 17 or 18, then, you, then you, they might start thinking um, because... Uh, you know, they're getting a 50% increase on, on the current share price. They can bail out. Um, so so that's, that's the one thing, is, is it makes an offer at a price which is still would give them a substantial profit. Uh, it, it makes that quite attractive. Whereas when Cristiano Ronaldo joined the club and, and the price was trading above $20 briefly, in order to buy the Glazers out, again, you'd have to give them a profit. You'd have to be selling at $27 or $28. So if there is going to be a deal... It can be a deal at a lower price. If United feel that they've had enough, then, then it, it means that there's more people who potentially can buy the club because the, ask, the overall asking price would be lower. Just a couple of final questions. Um, last time we spoke, we mentioned Jim Ratcliffe. 
um, one of Britain's, if not Britain's most wealthiest man, um, uh, a United fan, was looking to buy Chelsea, you know, that didn't happen. Do you think there still could be something there? Because it seems to have been, from my point of view anyway, gone a bit quiet there. Do you think there could be something there? Or do you think that's just one of those things where you'd have to wait and see? Well, there's, there's two issues. First of all, can he buy the club? Yes, he can. And, and he can certainly buy the club with the with the share price having gone down, if, if he can you know, put up an acceptable price. B, what's in it for him? Um He's he's not looking to make a profit. You know that was certainly that the comments he came in respect of uh, talking about buying Chelsea. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 if if I was from Oldham and a United fan and the richest man in the country, and I was seventy years old, and I wanted people to remember me for something, presently he's got it for people riding bicycles. Now what he could do is being remembered of the man that rescued Manchester United from the Glazers. Which which of those are going to look better on his tombstone? Well, Which of those are going to look better when they when they write the obituaries? Listen, you know, riding bicycles is all very well and good. I'm not knocking it, but yeah, save, yeah, yeah. rescuing Manchester United will make him a hero to, to millions of people, certainly here in Manchester as well. Um, just one final question as well, Kieran. You, asked, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, the Glazers being a bit divided and, and some of them were sort of questioning the the validity in it or the, whether it's worth the trouble even. We've seen so many protests over the years. I would be surprised if there wasn't more protests next season. Do you think those those protests can help get through to the Glazers? Do you think that could make a difference? Um, I, I don't think it makes a difference to the Glazers themselves. What has been in more of an issue, I think, is the impact on sponsors. You know, we, we saw one of the sponsors drop out around about 12 months ago. We've seen... Yeah, you know, is, is it the 1958 group? They are trying to take a you know, a non-violent direct action approach um, in targeting those people who are connected to the club to say, um, we don't feel that the Glazers represent the values of Manchester United fans. And therefore, by, by being connected to the Glazers Manchester United, we think that you will also suffer reputational damage now that that could be an approach which uh, could make the the sponsors feel uncomfortable, um, and if if that is the case, then that that will uh, have to be discussed at, at at the highest levels of the club because the directors have a duty to to all shareholders to to try to maximise the the wealth of the club. So I, I think um, protest. Yeah, you know, I've, I've I've been on protest on a variety of things, and let's face it, the majority of them are good fun with your mates but you secretly know that it's not going to make a lot of difference. I, I think being organised in a smart way and and tar- if, if, it's, if, if the Glazers are as obsessed with money as people think, then target the money. Target the money, and that's certainly what groups like the 1958, like you mentioned, and other people are, are doing, and we'll see if that has the, the desired effect. I certainly hope it does, because I think that since the Glazers have taken over Manchester United, it just seems things seem to be just getting worse on the pitch and off the pitch. Kieran, it's been fantastic speaking to you, as always, despite the fact that it's not quite all sunshine and rainbows when I speak to you, some of the some of the news you give us, but I do appreciate you explaining what's going on and sort of giving us a little bit of hope there. There's always a little bit of hope. Uh, so thanks for coming on the channel. Thanks for the invite, Jay. Take, Best wishes to all at the paddock. Take care. So a big thanks to Kieran Maguire from The Price of Football for coming on the channel again and explaining where Manchester United are at financially. It didn't make pretty viewing, did it? But as I said earlier, there is a little bit of hope. Who knows that maybe the Glazers will sell up. We'll just leave Manchester United alone. They'll still end up making a lot of money, won't they? We heard there as well from Kieran that some of the protests, maybe not necessarily just the protests, but targeting the money can have an effect and we can expect more of that next season. I don't think those protests, I don't think those targeted um, approaches to the sponsors are going to go away anytime soon. And nor should they, because Manchester United fans have had enough of the Glazers' ownership. It just hasn't been good enough. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Make sure you are subscribing to the channel. Hit that like, share and subscribe button. I'm Jay Moy. This has been the one-on-one interview with Kieran Maguire. Thanks for watching.